everyone welcome back to the mediator to another session with me i am your host extel i am glad to be here i am also glad that you are here please continue to comment on a lot of these topics we talk about and if you have a question please use the link in the comment section so we can talk about your issue here and now well today we do have something to talk about and i'm gonna go right into it shall we so here's the question there is this guy i have been dating for over five months now the relationship is going on well but the problem is that he is not educated okay he doesn't know how to construct proper english and doesn't speak fluently aside from that he is a good guy is really giving me concern so the girl is saying that this is really giving her concern I feel like I'm using him because I don't have intentions of getting married to him but my mind keeps telling me to wait a little longer now my question is does it really matter for a graduate to marry an illiterate so I'm a bit confused here and maybe you can clarify because you are asking whether there is something wrong whether it matters for a graduate to marry an illiterate. But then in the same sentence, you said that you feel like you are using him because you don't have intentions of getting married to him. But your mind is telling you to wait a little longer. So would I be right to conclude that the reason why you don't have any intentions of marrying him is because he does not speak good English? or because he's an illiterate and you're a graduate. Now, you know, a lot of people would say you are very vain and you know, why would you even think that it should matter the fact that you're a graduate and he's an illiterate, but I will say that it matters and you are asking the right questions, but from another angle, and maybe I can help to shift your perspective about looking at this to someone. It may not matter at all to them. What, their partner's educational qualifications are and whether or not they speak a particular language. And to another person, that same scenario means the world to them. They will feel uncomfortable if the person is not up to par with them. And I'm assuming that you are in the second bucket because you're asking the question about his education. But I'll pose a question back to you. Why are you even in a relationship with him? If the fact that he's not been to school makes you feel so uncomfortable that you're asking this question are you wanting some parts of him and not other parts of him apart from the fact that he does not speak or construct proper english sentences and doesn't speak fluently are there other things about his lack of formal education that bother you I, I say formal because education is not only what we learn in the classes and going through the official pathway. There are people that are educated that have never seen the four walls of a classroom. So what about it bothers you? I would say this, right? There are other issues about the mismatch and compatibility when you marry somebody that is not of the same mental fortitude or ability to hold discussions with you when you are with somebody then there is that disconnect there is a disconnect if you are unable to communicate clearly if you are unable to make decisions together on certain things because they have a different viewpoint if you are unable to talk about life or occurrence life's occurrences together then there is a mismatch or in a scenario where because of your education you're making more money than he is and for that reason there's tension in the home i'm talking about a marriage there's tension in the home because you're making more and he feels like you know he's not the man or all of those problems that happen but there are people where their relationship is so grounded it doesn't matter who makes what they have a solid communication irrespective of their different levels in education i have said all of this to say this you are the only one who can tell whether his lack of education is relevant. 
because to A, it could be relevant and to B, absolutely not relevant. If this is a great man, if this is someone who loves you, if this is someone you're compatible with, if this is someone who respects you, if this is someone who accepts you the way you are, if this is someone with whom you see life through a similar lens, mind you, I said similar, not same, because everybody has a different lens. If this is someone who sees life through a similar lens, like you do, why will it matter that he cannot speak or construct a proper sentence in English? Okay, it's your preference. I get it. But this is something that can change. This is something that can be worked on. And if you feel with all your heart that there is no remedy, he's not willing, he says, this is how I speak, I'm not going to change it, and you are that uncomfortable, then just maybe you are really wasting his time. Let him go. Your mind is telling you to be patient. What are you being patient about? that you will wake up one morning and he would have learned the queen's language in his sleep? What are you patient about? Because you feel like if you let go of this, you might not find good. Our relationships don't come to us in a box with a red ribbon tied on top of it. There is going to be always something that you can help to work on and build on together noun if the other person is willing for sure if they are unwilling are you ready to accept him as he is and not change an iota of who he is and if the question is no then let him go another woman will not mind his his literacy status but if you do i'm not faulting you for it is your preference but I, I just want you to look at it holistically. Look at it 360. Don't have a linear view to it. And if you look at it 360 and you feel like every time you guys are in public and he speaks and you just want to hide under a rock, then it's not the person for you. Right? You got to make the choice. It's not the person for you. And own up to your preferences or maybe challenge your superficial preferences i love to tell the story of you know my own story and my own super superficial preferences that i had and i feel like every little girl growing up has this superficial preference of what they believe their husband should look like or sound like or be like we want him a certain way a certain height a certain skin tone, making X amount of money, a certain build, because that's what we see in the movies. And that's what we're trained to believe a, a, a good, handsome husband should look like. But you also have to know that you, as unique as you are, would also attract to yourself, or should attract to yourself, the person that is compatible most with you. That's when you start looking really at your compatibility aside of those superficial preferences that you have. If he loves you, if you are yourself with him, if you feel at home with him, if your heart is at peace with him, if you are most yourself with him, would it matter that he is not six foot tall? Would it matter that he does not have a formal education? Sometimes our superficial preferences is just so that we can show our friends that look, I got a good catch. A lot of people are still in that bubble. They are with partners that they are not compatible with, but they look picture perfect. Could it also be that you're uncomfortable because of what your friends will say? Marriage is not for the immature. And it is immature for you to marry or want to be with someone just because you want people to think that you got a good catch. At the end of the day, your friends are not married to that man. You know? 
When all is said and done, it's just you and him. It's just you and him. So peel off the fluff, sister. Peel off the fluff. Your preference is education and literacy and ability to construct good sentences. Why? Why does that matter to you? Get down to the root of it. And if all is said and done, let me be honest with you, please don't marry somebody that you're going to be irritated by. Don't do that. If you cannot accept him lovingly, extending grace to what you believe is his shortcoming, don't do it. But if you feel like, oh yeah, maybe I'm just being influenced by the wrong thing. I was worried about what my girlfriends would say. It doesn't matter. I love him like that. He makes the mistakes. We joke about them. We laugh about them. I teach him here and there about, you know, the things to say. He's got a good business. He's got a good head on his head. Then be in it for who he is and not all these external factors. Hope this has helped you. It's a difficult place. I've got to admit but we all come to that point and that juncture in our lives where we put off our childish ways, especially when you have to make a life altering decision, a destiny altering decision. You come to a point where you look at yourself in the mirror and you have to make a decision to shed your childlike ways. I'm a firm believer in the word of God. I'm a Christian. And I'll quote the scripture that says, when I was a child, I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away my childish ways. And this might just be your call to put away your childish ways. I'm always here if you need more context or more advice. Until next time, stay blessed.